Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about mitral regurgitation, the signs and symptoms. Very quickly, some of the causes of mitral regurgitation can be left ventricular dilatation, annular calcification in the elderly, rheumatic fever, infective endocarditis, mitral valve prolapse, connective tissue disorders, for example Marfan syndrome, and ruptured cordae tendinae. So what are the signs and symptoms? Firstly, the symptoms can include dyspnea, fatigue, lethargy, and in the later stages, the symptoms of right heart failure and those of congestive cardiac failure. There is now also the increased chance of developing infective endocarditis. On examination, you can find a displaced apex beat laterally with a thrusting character. On auscultation, a pansystolic murmur that is palpable as a thrill. The murmur will be loudest at the apex and radiate over the precordium into the axilla. Also, a third, a third heart sound can be present. With mitral regurgitation, the blood flows in the wrong direction. During systole, when the left ventricle contracts and the mitral valve is meant to be closed, blood flow should normally go flow, flow out through the aorta. In mitral regurgitation, some of the blood regurges back through the mitral valve and into the left atrium. As a result, there is a reduced cardiac output as not all the blood flows out through the aorta. With a reduced cardiac output, there is fatigue and lethargy. If the mitral regurgitation is acute, for example because of the sudden rupture of the cordae tendinae, there will be a sudden increase in left atrial pressure because of the ventricle inadvertently pumping blood back into the atrium. This in turn increases pulmonary venous pressure and so causes pulmonary edema, and so dyspnea. This pressure can also eventually develop a strain on the right heart, causing symptoms of right heart failure. With long-standing regurgitation, the left ventricle dilates. That is why the apex beat is displaced laterally. The third heart sound is heard because of the rapid filling of the dilated left ventricle in early diastole. The murmur is pansystolic. It will inevitably be a systolic murmur. This is because, as I, have, as I have already explained, blood is moving back across the mitral valve when it shouldn't be during ventricular contraction, systole. Thank you. If you have found this useful, please have a look at the other tutorials on, on valve pathologies at the homepage. Thank you.